Welcome to the next Moto Champion Talk Show brought to you by Bridgestone. I'm Danielle Teal, and with my co-host John Boucher, we bring you the latest and greatest on two wheels. This week in the news, as they said in MotoGP, it was the battle that never was at Bruno. And by that, they meant there was no match for Jorge Lorenzo. Jorge, who took the new track record during qualifying as the only rider able to make it around the track in less than a minute and 55 seconds, went on to dominate the race, making this his fifth victory of the season. Although it has him tied up in the points for first place with Rossi, each with 211, Jorge sits on top with more race wins this season, five to Rossi's three. In Moto2, Johan Zarco extended his lead in Moto2 championship standings after taking the win. And in Moto3, Nicolo Antonelli took his career first GP victory. Congrats to them both. And since they have a bit of a break before their next round, let's catch you up on point standings in World Superbike. With only three rounds to go, Ray sits on top with Chaz Davies and Tom Sykes following behind. Ray now only needs six points to clinch the world championship and is predicted to win once they reconvene from summer break in September. And let's just bring it on back around to the Canadian Superbike Series that wrapped up over the weekend, and for the second consecutive year, Triumph's Kenny Reedman locked down the Canadian Pro Sport Bike Championship. So on that note, we have the 2015 Canadian Pro Sport champ, Kenny Reedman, on along with Josh Heron to talk about his season leading into the final round. But before we go to our next segment, let's take a quick minute to thank some of our great sponsors. JRI Shocks, the new era in racing shocks. For the Motorcycle Technology Center, visit bikers-lab.com. That's a Bridgestone Ecopia. I've never seen them out in the wild like this. It's young, too. They're very young. We're here studying the behavior of Bridgestone's fuel-efficient Ecopia tires in their natural setting. They can help you save up to $450 in gas over their lifetime. What? Holy smokes, that's a great deal. <sighs> great. You scared it away. Oh. Start going green and saving some green. Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. Yellow. This little beauty here is top of the line. So you just pull like this to go left and like so to go right. Where are the brakes? I just grab a hold of both and pull straight back. And the whoa is optional. You wouldn't buy a motorcycle without handlebars. No, thanks. And you shouldn't ride a motorcycle without GEICO insurance. Roadside assistance, 24-hour service, great rates. GEICO Motorcycle. See how much you could save. RST Racing Leathers, gloves, and boots available at ridersdiscount.com. For the most comfortable ride on two wheels, choose Saddleman. Up next is one of our most popular segments of the show, the Product Spotlight. And this week, we have something a little different, something for the ladies. An item I own personally and highly recommend, a trendy pair of bullet jeans. Let's go to this week's Product Spotlight. This week's Product Spotlight features the women's bullet jeans SR4 Blue. The women's SR4 bullet jeans feature the Kovac liner with one of the highest levels of coverage seen in the motorcycle jeans industry with 35% Kovac coverage. The thermal barrier presents burns in a crash or a sliding scenario and the abrasion resistant Kovac material makes these jeans the first in the world to perform at level two safety in a CE test. Most of the other riding pants in the market today are made of airmen material, but the bullet Kovac material beats airmen across the board in abrasion resistance, cut resistance, and thermal performance testing. If you haven't seen bullet jeans put to the test, check this out. There are pockets for the optional armor inserts in the hip and knee areas. What really separates bullet jeans is that they look and feel like regular jeans and not some big bulky padded diaper. Now, for more information on the jeans themselves, or if you're looking at being a U.S. distributor, call Paul at 510-506-6095, or you can email him at the address that we've got right here on the screen. This is the Women's Bullet Jeans SR4, and that's this week's Product Spotlight. We'll be right back after this commercial break with our first guest, 2015 Canadian Superbike Pro Sport Bike Champ, Kenny Reedman.
for safe and structured track days, it's N2 Track Days. Check out their schedule at n2td.org. TT Moto Gear, your source for premium products and service. American Cargo, the next level in performance riding packs. And we're back and we've got the reigning Pro Sport National Champion in Canada, the number one again for 2015. It's Kenny Reedman on with us. Kenny, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. So congratulations, you fought back from an early season injury. Tell us how your season went and congrats on your championship. Thank you. Um, it went pretty good, uh, especially near the end. Uh, you know, first qualifying session of the first round, I was on the ground with an injured shoulder, and right then and there, I thought my whole season was over, and uh, it was pretty devastating. But you know, I worked uh, closely with my doctor Steve Walker, and he came out to the races and froze me up, and so I couldn't feel any pain from my shoulder, and we worked through it and ended up winning the last five rounds of the year. Now, I'm sure that was pretty devastating to start the season like that, being that you were Triumph's first champion ever last year, and it was your job this year to defend the title. Talk, us, talk to us a little bit about this relationship that you've developed with Triumph. You've been with them since 2009 when you debuted, and you've built such a strong relationship with them since then. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, I've been with them ever since 2009, uh, originally with uh, Chris Ellis, who is the, the guy for Triumph in Canada. And then uh, as we tried to get down into the AMA, started doing some of that stuff, we started you know, being more involved with Triumph North America Direct. And uh, two years ago, when they decided to go really hardcore with the full factory effort, I was one of the riders along with Elena Myers and Jason DeSalvo. And uh, you know, and then they picked up Bobby Fong, and Eslick was there too. So they had a, a great, huge effort. And uh, you know, I was just—I guess I kind of started riding the Triumph at the right time to get to ride with all those great riders. So let's talk about that—that um, that effort that they've put forth in the last couple of years. We've really seen a lot from them. Um, what was the big push behind that? I mean, is it, did they just see some talent and a potential with you guys, and an opportunity to get their namesake back out there and racing, or what? Um, you know, I'm not actually too sure. Um, like we had always supported the brand, um, and they had always supported us and it just seemed that every year I was doing a bit better and our relationship was growing. So when it came to the point where they wanted to have a huge effort in the AMA, I was just one of the names on the list and I was, you know, very fortunate for them to pick me. Now, a few years ago, I'd say that our series and the Canadian series were kind of comparable. Uh, we only had five to seven rounds. You guys had five rounds. We had, I think, seven at the very least. Um, would you say our series are similar other than that? Yeah, because uh, we run the same tires. Um, you know, it's a Dunlop spec tire as well. Uh, the classes are pretty similar. Uh, we, uh, we also run amateur classes at our nationals, which is pretty cool just so that all the amateur riders kind of have a like a more easy step up into the pros, I think, because they see us racing every weekend. They're racing at the same tracks. Um, but, you know, other than that, there's not a whole lot the same. Our tracks are a lot different up here in Canada. That's one major difference. Is it because of the weather? <laughs> yeah. Not so much the weather. Um, no, just uh, for whatever reason, our tracks are pretty unsafe up here, so... It's unfortunate, but it's uh, what we got to deal with. Interesting. So then what was it like when you got to come down here and, and race these circuits? I know Road Atlanta, when you made, um, made an appearance this year in place of Bobby Fong, who was injured, that was your first time there. So what would you say about our tracks here? Oh, I absolutely love the tracks in the States. They're a lot smoother because you don't have to deal with as much of the frost in the ground as we do up here in Canada. And uh, just I think the industry is that much bigger, car racing and motorcycle racing in the States. So there's a lot more money into the facilities down there. And when you crash, you don't hit a wall, which is always very nice. Oh, uh, yeah, that's, that's one place to start, right? So uh, another interesting fact, you competed in the Canadian Superbike Pro Superbike Series this year and finished second. So tell us about working double duty this year while chasing a championship in both classes, it sounds like. Uh, yeah, it was, um, you know, we decided that, you know, I'm 23 years old, time to get on a big bike and still wanted to defend the number one plate. So it was, it was really hard. We had a Sturgis cycle back us with our, our uh, Superbike program along with GE Capital and started off the year kind of like, yeah, let's, let's see how Superbike goes and, you know, try to get a couple podiums here and there. And, you know, by the end of the year, I was on the podium pretty much every weekend and got a bunch of second place finishes and was battling for the lead and, uh, you know, ended up getting second in the championship. 
Very nice, very nice. So now the season's over, what's on the schedule? I know you did a little flat track this week, or plan to anyways, so what else? Uh, yeah, I'm doing the London Half Mile with Flat Track Canada next weekend, which is always a fun event. I did it last year, too. Um, and then, you know, motocrossing, mountain biking. Ice um, racing. As soon as, the, as soon as the water freezes, yeah, I'll be out on the ice bike for sure. Very good. Now you can follow Kenny on social media, of course, and see all the pictures behind the scenes of him racing, riding. And you said you're not big into flat track, but you're about to race the half mile? Yeah, I, I've done a couple flat track races. I, I didn't grow up flat tracking or anything like that, so I'm not too good at it. But I'm going to I'm run, run an intermediate, and I'm just going to go out there and have some fun. Sounds good to us. He is the reigning champ now two-time for 2015 uh, in the Canadian Pro Sport Bike National Championship Series. It's number one again. I was said number two, number one again. Kenny Reedman. Kenny, thanks so much for coming on the show. Thank you very much for having me. Absolutely, and we'll be right back after this commercial break. Sunstar, the largest OEM supplier of sprockets and brake rotors in the world. Check them out at sunstar-mc.com. CoreMoto Performance Brake Lines. Check them out at CoreMoto.com. Get a better grip on your ride with Grip and Ride. This segment was brought to you by GEICO, where 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on motorcycle insurance. Tire warmers, bike stands, undersuits, you can find all of them at MotoDRacing.com. For protective jeans that fit your lifestyle, it's Bullet Jeans. Woodcraft Technologies, making products for racers by racers at Woodcraft-CFM.com. And we're back, and we're here with the number two rider on the Wheels in Motion, Motorsport.com, Mean Yamaha, Josh Heron. Josh, welcome to the show. Hey, what's up, guys? Glad to be back on. Glad to have you back on. So, obviously, you lost out on the championship, but you're sitting third right now in points, just five points behind second, which is Garrett Gerloff. I mean, how would you say your 2015 season's going so far? I'd say it's going good. You know, after last year, having such a terrible year like we did it was uh you know it was really important to me to just get on a good team and get some good results and i feel like we've accomplished that you know we've got a few wins been on the podium every race that we haven't had a you know a mechanical or if we if i crashed out so i'm pretty happy with how the year went got my confidence back up you know it's good just myself to to go out and win and to be able to tell myself oh, okay i can do it you know it wasn't it wasn't like I just forgot how to ride a bike, but those kind of thoughts go through your head whenever you have a year like I did last year. So um, to be able to win again is, is was really good for my confidence. Right, and three wins to be exact uh, this season. And when we talked to you at the beginning of the year, you did say that this year was going to be all about rebuilding your confidence. It's a rebuilding year for you. How has the reception been here from the fans, you coming back and making your comeback to the States? How has it been? It's been good. You know, I, everybody's... If, feels like I never really left actually it's uh it's been a lot of fun for sure the new Moto America series is going really well it seems to be in better shape than it was when I left so that's good to see uh I'm hearing good things about it for next year so uh, a lot of new teams are supposed to be thinking about coming in so that would be nice but um you know it's been the best thing for me has just been teaming up with Mean Motorsports you know they uh it may not be a factory team like I was on before, but they're definitely a really great team. And they, you know, I mean, puts everything that he has into the team to make it work. And 
that's the kind of stuff that I like to see out of somebody that's running my team. You know, I want to, I want to feel comfortable and, and know that the mechanics and my crew chief and all the guys on the team are working really hard. And that's exactly what we put together this year. And, um, you know, sometimes it's been difficult just because it's a little bit smaller budget than the teams that I'm used to being on. But at the same time, it's good because we can work together and I can show them things that I know about from just teams in the past and it helps them and they're also helping me just gain my confidence again and and uh you know providing a really good bike for me to go to go win races on and this year was really difficult for them because with the new rules change in super sport class the motors you know are a lot different than they were in the past they have a lot more power so you know we're going up against a team like Yamaha where I'm sure that they're going back to the world super sport guys and you know, getting the little secrets that, that they had to make the bike successful. And we're having to do it just on our own. And Gary Dean, my crew chief, is is working really hard at doing that. And uh, it seems like he's, you know, hit the nail on the head now. And, and we uh, we have a really strong, strong motor for the last couple of rounds. Right. And it's been a big effort on both of your parts. Mean, we know Mean lost out narrowly on the championship last year. You've missed out on it again this year, but you're right there in the hunt for second place. Let's talk about Indy. That was our most recent event that you had a major high side right there. You're right up there battling all the way to the end uh, up until the restart of the race. Talk us through that. You have a great video on your uh, fan page on Facebook right now talking about the incident and uh, just some of the things. It was a great video where you talked about pushing the corner workers out of the way to get back on your bike. Tell us a little bit about that yeah it was pretty crazy you know um that that whole race just was kind of a bummer just because uh you know we went from leading the whole thing to having it interrupted by a red flag and when we went back out I guess I was just really anxious and I knew that I had nothing to lose and and I uh I just went into turn two pushing really hard and made a mistake and when I came out I uh I just gassed it like normal, but I was in first gear instead of second to try and get a good drive out. When I did that and I shifted to second, it just, you know, threw me off. And, uh, you know, I took a minute to catch catch my breath and uh, got got to thinking like, man, this, you know, I just started thinking like, oh, the championship's over, you know. All JD has to do is finish now. And I was like, you know what, forget it. I'm not going to – and I've never been the kind of person that doesn't get back up and try to get going again. So ran over to my bike and – corner worker was like screaming at me no you can't get back on your bike the chain's off you know you can't finish the race and I I looked down at it I was like I can fix it and he's like no you can't get away and I just <laughs> I got really mad and just kind of shoved him out of the way because he wasn't letting me look at it and you know I talked about it on Facebook a little bit it goes back to kind of being riding around our yard with my brothers or my friends and not maintaining the bikes really well so the chain will always come off and We'd have to just like sl slide it back on and then yank the bike backwards and pop it back in place. And that's what I did. And it, it, uh, you know, I pictured it in my head working a certain way and, and I, but I didn't expect it to actually work, but I didn't know if you could actually do that on the R6 with the chain and all that being so big compared to little bikes. And, but it worked and I was able to get going. I punched the wind, the rest of what was remaining of the windscreen off the bike and, Ended up doing pretty much the same lap times that the leaders were doing, even though I had no f right foot peg, the windscreen was gone, and the chain was, you know, binded up. I could feel it just wanting to come off again. So it's pretty crazy, and I'm disappointed to lose out on the championship, but if anybody's going to win it, I'd like JD to win it. You know, he's a really good kid, and, you know, he said a lot of good things about me this year, and I know he works really hard. So, um, you know, I'm happy to, to have uh, have them win it, but, but next year, uh, if I'm – doing the same program we're we're gonna go after it really hard especially now that i know the team and the bike and and everything is uh you know coming along for us okay so 100 percent effort all the way to the end uh if you wanted to catch that full interview with josh it's on his fan page on facebook so talking about next year josh what are the plans is there any hopes to move up to the super stock class or what are the talks right now right now uh nothing you know we uh like I said, being with, with Mean Motorsports is great, but you, as a rider and as a person, you always want to try and find something a little bit better. So I've, I've spoke with some teams, um, but mostly everybody's already got their stuff dialed in for next year. Um, so if it's, if it's up to me, I'd, I'd be happy to stay with Mean Motorsports and try and get the, the 600 championship wrapped up. 
I've tried it for a few years, and I know they have, and neither one of us have been able to do it. And and uh, also, they gave me gave me a shot this year when nobody else would. So I'd like to to pay them back and, and try and get a championship next year for them for sure. So um, as of right now, it looks like we might be staying with them next year, which I'm happy about. Um, but nothing's official yet, so so we'll have to let you know later on. Well, you'll definitely have to let us know. Moving on to New Jersey, uh, you plan to throw it down there, you said, to look out for you at the final round because you're coming back with a vengeance at that race. So what's up with that one? Yeah, I'm excited to go to Jersey. You know, it's uh, I got to go last year, but it, it killed me just sitting there watching. So um, I'm excited to go back. You know, there's I have a good following in New Jersey for some reason. The, the fans get really into it there. So I'm excited to go there and, and see all them. And, uh, you know, we... Uh, New Jersey is one of my favorite tracks. I've, I think I've won like four or five races there, so it's it's a place that I really look forward to going to every year, not just because of the track, but because of the atmosphere and, and like I said, the way that the fans are. So um, we have nothing to lose <laughs> going at, at that round, so I'm going to try and get the double for the first time this year. We haven't been able to do that, so um, just uh, just hoping for the best. Right, the fans there literally fist pump every time the bikes come around. It's the craziest thing you ever saw. <laughs> so that's uh, on the track, off the track, Josh. You're running the Heron Compound. How are things going down there? Really good. You know, we uh, last year at the end of the year, whenever the weather was really nice, we started seeing a, you know, really big turnouts. We had like 60 something bikes out there, which was is insane for a supermoto track. Um, this year, as the summer, you know, as the heat came, it was pretty you know our average is like 30 to 40 bikes out on the track every race so i'm really looking forward to the winter series that we have coming up uh we have races every month of the year and uh you know the winter series is called the the frostbite series which is we just try to make it a little bit of fun and and um so i'm really looking forward to that we've had uh joe roberts came out this year bobby fallen came out and try to try to invite more people from the track to come out and, and enjoy it and uh you know it's, it seems like everybody really likes it and has a lot of fun so it's uh it's crazy it seems like sometimes i enjoy riding with all the people at at the track here more than i do going to the races um just because you're i'm able to relax and really have a lot of fun and and uh especially seeing all the little kids come up you know i always growing up i heard adults saying how fast time flies and I never really realized it and then whenever I started doing the races here I found out how that works because like uh say Ashton Yates he started coming here when he was like 10 years old and now he's 15 and it's crazy just to see how much he's changed and and all the other kids even that are going up through the KTM class now it's it's nuts seeing that and now we have you know a new a new group of little kids going through so I'm really excited for that. Very good. I was going to say Aaron Yates is in regular attendance there as well. Uh, the Scorcher series is coming to an end September 26th and for more information Josh where can they go? Uh, Facebook.com slash Heron Compound. Uh, you can also check out the website HeronCompound.com but pretty much any social media site we're on and that's the best way to get a hold of us. Perfect. So follow him on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Him, his brothers, Heron Compound, they're all over the place. He's made quite a comeback in 2015, and we look forward to seeing how it all goes down at New Jersey Motorsports Park. For the number two, Josh Heron. Josh, thanks so much for coming on. Hey, see you guys. Appreciate you having me on. Absolutely. We'll be right back after this commercial. Evil Technology, 100% American-made precision parts and accessories at EvilTechnology.com. Chuck Walla Valley Raceway, 17 corners to challenge even the most experienced rider. Go race, CVR.com. SVRacingParts.com, the exclusive importer and distributor of the KO Mini GP MR125 race bike. That's SVRacingParts.com. 
Thanks so much, Kenny and Josh, for being guests on this week's show. Don't forget to follow them both on Instagram and Facebook. And quickly, we want to congratulate Moto America Superstock 1000 frontman Jake Gagne, who swapped out his road bike for a dirt bike over the weekend when he entered round 11 of the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Series. Jake completely immersed himself in the trenches, or in the ruts as I should say, with some of the best motocrossers in the world. Guys like current Supercross champ Ryan Dungey and current motocross champ Ken Roxon, regulars like Blake Baggett and Justin Barsha. Jake silenced any of the skeptics by qualifying a respectable 24th out of 40, finishing 22nd overall in the first moto, but sitting out the second due to an aggravated hip injury and a Moto America Championship on the line. Hats off to Jake Gagne for silencing the critics and fulfilling a lifelong dream. That's it for tonight's show. For the future of motorcycle racing, it's here at Next Moto Champion. You don't need brakes. <laughs> you don't need brakes. For that? You just need gas. Okay.